fatigue here. <clears throat> I just wanted to give you a quick update on the assignment from this week. This was star packet number two, and I'm just going to go through it and explain it. I'm not going to give you all the answers. I'm going to get you to a point to where you can find your own answer. <clears throat> so I'll basically just set you up for answering the question. And this assignment is due on a Friday, and you need to put it into Canvas. Okay, so here we go. So this is what the packet looked like. Okay, so the first question says, Bert drew an angle that has characteristics listed below. He has a measure greater than 88.5, and it is an obtuse angle. Obtuse means anything greater than 90 degrees so greater than 90 degrees so let's look at what we got here well we got this is 90 so that doesn't work this is 88 that's not an obtuse angle 88 89.5 isn't an obtuse angle so your only choice is a okay let's look at the let's turn the page so Sorry, there's a little bit of bleed through on this, but anyway, it says which situation is best represented by the integer of negative 14. So you're going to read the sentences and you're going to try to figure out which one would represent <coughs> a negative number. Okay, and the grocery store clerk helps 14 more. Well, that's a positive number. That's not it. A coach divides the players and team into 14 equal groups. No. A mail carrier delivers mail to 14, no, that's a positive. And the only one left is a carpenter shortens the length of a board by 14 inches. Okay, next question. Felix is reading the sign below in order to decide uh, when to go to a violin lesson. The lesson below shows some of the possible outcomes of one day and one time to have a violin lesson. Okay, so... The sign says Monday and Wednesday morning or afternoon or Tuesday and Thursday evening only. Okay, so now they have this chart here and they're showing Monday morning, Wednesday afternoon, Tuesday evening. It says which slow shows all the other possible outcomes of one day and one time. So you have to take this and eliminate it from the sign, right? So Monday morning, right? Monday morning, that's there. Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon. And Tuesday evening, so Tuesday evening, so that one's done. So what's left? Well, we have Monday afternoon, we have Wednesday morning, so let's see if we can find that. Monday afternoon, Monday afternoon, so there's, Mon well, we got that one, that one checks. Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning. And we have Tuesday, I'm sorry, Thursday evening. So these are the ones that are the other possible outcomes. So your only answer is C. Okay. Next question. We have question number four. There are 176 slices of bread in eight loaves. If there are some the same number of slices in each loaf how many slices of bread are in five loaves okay so what you got to do is find how many slices in one loaf so you're going to take a 176 you're going to divide it by eight you're going to get this is slices right then you're going to take this number and you're going to multiply it by five and that's your answer okay and it's going to be one of these over here okay okay five Xavier has a group of rectangular prisms. Each rectangular prism has a volume, so we're talking about volume, of 128 cubic centimeters and a height of 2. The table shows the relationship between each prism's length and width, right? So if, we, if you remember, volume is equal to length times width times height, right? And if we now, if we take this formula and substitute what we know, right, volume is 128 equals and we know that the height is 2 so we don't know the length we don't know the width times 2 okay and so what we can do is simplify this expression 
by getting the length and width on one side. So if we take this and divide by 2, this cancels out, but whatever I do to the right, I have to do to the left. So I'm going to divide this by 2. <coughs> and if I rewrite it, that's 128 over 2 equals length times width. Okay, so with that, you should be able to find your answer. And I want you to notice they put this chart here, which really does nothing but just to distract you. Okay? So with that information, you should be able to answer number five. Okay. Turn the page. Number six. It says, Gracie borrowed $92 from her father. She already, she already paid back 12 She will pay him... Uh, she will pay him another 16 on money and then make equal payments for until the rest of the money has been repaid. The expression below can be used to find the number of equal payments Gracie will need to make in order to repay her money. How many equal payments will Gracie need in order to repay her money? Okay, so you're just going to solve this equation, right? And you're going to use PEMDAS, right? P E M D A S, right? So you're going to do parentheses first. So uh, let's. I'll just rewrite over here. 92 minus 12 plus 16. So six and two is eight. And one and one that's 28. So it's 92 minus 28 over four. So now we're going to take 92 and subtract 28. And we are going to get ninety two minus twenty eight is sixty four. So now that simplifies to sixty four over four, and then we divide sixty four by four. Whoops, sorry, sixty four divided by four. And that equals 16. So, G is your answer. Okay. Let's look at the next question. Okay. Okay, number seven. So, number seven is a graph shows the number of hours that four businesses were open. <coughs> okay. Now, whenever you get a chart, I want you to always go and read the chart and put the numbers there. Okay, if you read this dry cleaner, this is a number of hours open. This is the business, so that is 12 and a half. This is 10. This is 8 and a half. And this is 11. Okay, so now you hit, it's much easier to read your chart based on the information in the chart. Which statement could be true? Well, you have to read each one of these sentences. And as you can see, you are going to have to go and calculate the time right it says the dry cleaner opened from 615 to 16 that, that's so the dry cleaner you look right that's only 12 hours right and our chart says 12.5 so that's not it the restaurant opened 1145 and closed at 930 restaurant 1140 let's round it to 12 12 that's nine and a half nine hours and 45 minutes and it's 10 so guess what that's not it the post office opened at nine and closed at six that's nine 10 11 12 13 14 9 10 11 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 that's nine hours and it says the post office was eight and a half so that's not true the clinic opened at 7 30 and closed at 6 30. if it was 6 30 6 30 it'd be 12 so that's 11 so guess what that matches this so that's your answer. I'm sorry, I didn't, wasn't paying attention to <coughs> this chart. Sorry, I don't sound like myself. I think I have a little bit of a cold. Okay, so eight. Let's look at eight. So eight. He drilled a he drilled a circular hole that has a diameter of eight millimeters. So if you draw a circle, the line a diameter is the line that goes straight through a circle. This is a diameter, okay, and they're telling you that this is 8 millimeters. Which equation can be used to find R, the radius of a circular hole in the middle? 
Well, a radius is from the middle of the circle outside. This is a radius. This is a radius. That's a radius, right? So it takes two radiuses to make one diameter, right? So the only, the only answer that would make any sense is G8 equals 2 times R. Okay, 9. On Tuesday morning, a school cafeteria serves 16 gallons of orange juice during breakfast. How many cups are in 16 gallons? Okay, well, if you go to your reference sheet, you can figure out that there's 16 cups in um, one gallon. Okay, so now that you know that 16 cups equals one gallon, you're going to take 16 times 16, and you're going to get 256. So your answer is A, 256. Okay, turn the page. Okay, here we have the value of G can be determined using the expression R minus 9 eighths. Which table represents the relationship between the values of G and R? So that means whatever the thing, uh, the value of R is, you're going to subtract 9 eighths from it, and that's what you're going to put in the G column, okay? So you're just going to look at it. Let's look at the first one. Here's 39 eighths, and it changed to 38 eighths. Well, that's a whole one, right? So this can't be right if this is the expression, right? So it can't be F. Let's look at H, 3 and 4 and 1 eighth. Well, that went up, and we were supposed to subtract, so that's not it. Let's look at this one over here, 39 eighths and 40 eighths. Well, that went up, 39, 40, that went up, so it can't be that one. So only by elimination, right, it has to be this one, so it's G. Okay, you didn't even have to do any math. You just had to look at the numbers and see if this expression held true. Okay, so that's 10. 11. Okay, Ryan had a whole pizza. He ate one-eighth of the pizza for lunch and another 25% of the pizza for dinner. What fraction of pizza <coughs> has he not eaten? Okay, well, let's draw a picture. Here's a pizza. Right, there's four, there's six, there's... So we got eight slices of pizza. He ate one-eighth, right? So he ate one for lunch, right? And he left all this. And then it says he ate 25%. Right? So, if you take 7 eighths and I subtract 25% is the same thing as 1 quarter. Right? But if I'm going to subtract two fractions, I have to have a common denominator. So, I'm going to, change, I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 2, which makes this 2 eighths. So, now I have 7 eighths minus 2 eighths. 7 minus 2 is... 5 eighths. So your answer is B, 5 eighths. Okay, 12. A hummingbird weighed W ounces. One day the hummingbird drank 8 times its weight in water and ate half its weight in food. Which equation can be used to find T, the combined weight of water and food, in ounces that the hummingbird had that day? Okay, so we know that... So this is, this is the weight, W, right? He drank eight times his weight, so that's eight times his weight in wa water, and he ate half his weight in food, which equation could be used to find T, the total weight. So you know your expression is going to start with T, right? And we're adding the two together, so we know the expression has to have addition in it. And W is the weight, so we, if you just read through the expression, the question and start filling in your expression, you go T is equal to 8W, eight, eight right? Because that's the water. This is the water, right? Plus um, and half his weight in food. So we have to use W again, plus W. Um, in half, right? Because half his weight was food. 
Okay, so we have total weight of the hummingbird is equal to water. This is food. So your answer would be T is equal to 8W plus W over 2. So your answer is H. Okay, 13. Okay, this might be a little bit of a long video. There's like 52 questions on here. I'm going to try to go really fast. Okay, so 13. Miss Porter had eight parties at her house last year. The number of guests at her party were shown below. What is the median? Median means middle. So you have to put it in order from least to greatest. And then you're going to count. How many do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have eight. So that means you have an even number. So you're going to have a number in the middle. And you have to find the average of that. Right? So if we put these in order, right, what's the smallest number? My smallest number is nine. Then my next number is ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So it's four, fourteen. Then it's fifteen. Right? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20, oh, there's two 21s, and 27. Now let's count again to make sure we got eight. We didn't miss one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to count in from the outside. So that's 9 and 27, 10 and 21. 14 and 21. Now I have 15 and 19. They're in the middle. Well, I have to add those together and divide by 2. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Put down the 4. Carry the 1. That's 34. I divide that by 2. 2 goes into 3 once. Uh, 2, I have a 1 left over. And then I, I, 2 won't go into 1, so I have to bring down the 4. 2 goes into 14 7 times. Because it's 14. So my answer is 17. Okay, number 14. Number 14, use the ruler provided to measure the two figures below to the nearest centimeter. Okay, so you're going to go to your reference material. There is a chart. Here's one right here. So you notice on the side, it has a ruler of centimeters. And it has, on the other side, a ruler of inches. So depending on the question, you have two different rulers on there. And again, you have your reference materials, your formulas for a triangle, rectangle, parallelogram, trapezoid, and your volume. And then you have these other conversions, right, for length, volume, weight, and mass. And you have your metric also, okay? So don't forget about this chart. It's very important. Okay. So if we measure this, we'll notice that we have, this is, I've measured it already, this is 9, this is 3, and I know that this is 4, and this is 5, right? And area is length times width, so 9 times 3 is 27, and I know the formula for a triangle is area is equal to 1 half the base times the height, so 4 times 5 is 20, I take half of that, that means that's 10. So 27 plus 10 is 37 centimeters cubed. So you get H. Okay, that's 14. 15. Okay. 15. Mrs. Stevens drove through a total of 36 intersections on her way home from work last week. At four of every intersection, Miss Stevens had to stop for a red light before she could drive through. How many intersections did Miss Stevens have to stop for a red light. So here you're going to use proportion percent. So this is part over whole equals percent over 100. Okay, so what's my part? So for she drove through a total of 36 intersections. Oh, you know what? We're not going to do that. Let me see. You know, another way you could do it, if this is a ratio, this is 4 over 16 is equal to, and if this is 36, is there something I can multiply? 
36 divided by 16. Nope, that doesn't work. Hmm. Well, um, let's see. Let's try part over whole. Okay. Well, guys, I'm glitching. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. I do know that the answer is B or 9. <clears throat> and I'll come back and do another video on this. I don't know why I'm glitching on this. But anyway, so let's go down to 16. Okay, 16, you have 10 members of an art club. They donated money of $520. This is important information. That's important information. Then you have this line plot that shows what they gave, right? So you had three people that gave 20, so that's 60. You had one person give 40. You had one person, you had two give 60, so that's 120. You had two give 80, which is 160 and you had one give 100. So now if you add all that up, that's 60 plus 40 plus 120 plus 160 plus 100. And then if we add that all up, that's 0. That's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Put down the 8, carry the 1. That's 480. So then if we take 520 minus 480, Right, I'm gonna to have to borrow from the two, that's a one. No, I don't have to borrow. Yeah, I'd have to borrow from the five. That's four, that's 12, this is zero, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's four, so it's $40. So that means the 10th person had to give $40. So your answer is 40. Okay, let's go to 17. Okay, 17 says, what is the measure of angle G in the polygon, polygon below? Okay, and just as a triangle ha has to add up 180, a polygon has to add, add up to 360. So let's see what this adds up to. So 164, 147, 23, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, put down the 4, carry the 1, that's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, put down the 3, carry the 1, and that's 334. So now we're going to, we know these add up to 334, so we're going to take that and subtract it from 360, 334, borrow from the 6, that's a 5, that's a 10, that's a 6, 5 from 3 is 26. So your answer is D, 26 degrees. Okay, let's look at 18. 18, it says, a sea turtle made 460 dives in 12 hours. At this rate, how many dives did the sea turtle make in three hours? So you gotta figure out what he did in an hour, right? So you're gonna take 460 divided by 12. <sighs> um, so let's figure out what that is. So, I'm going to cheat a little bit. So, uh, 460 divided by 12 equals 38. So, in one hour, so we did 38 dives in one hour. So, we're just going to take 38 times 3. So, times 3. 8 times 3 is 24. Put down the 4, carry the 2. 3 times 3 is 9, 10, 11. Uh, eight, nine, eight, eight, eight times three is twenty-four. Well, it says how many? Did, so your closest number. It doesn't come out exactly, but this this is what it has to be. Okay. Okay. So nineteen. Okay, nineteen. The cylindrical barrel has a diameter. Um, of. Uh, 19.87 inches, which of the following is the best estimate of the circumference of the bottle? So the formula for circumference is pi r times r squared, or you can go c c circumference is pi times diameter. So if I have this, this is my circumference, right? Circumference. 
which is the distance around the outside of the circle. Okay, but they're saying the diameter here, that is 19.875. Okay, which of the following is the best estimate, estimate for the circumference of the barrel? Well, I know my formula is circumference is equal to pi times d. Pi is 3.14 times 19.875. So my answer is 19.875 times 3.14. It is... Ooh, guess what? This is in inches. And my answer is in feet. So when I do that, I get 62.4075 inches. But I have to convert it to feet because my answer is in feet. So I have to divide this by 12. So I have 62.4075 uh, divided by 12 is... 5.2. This is equal to 5.2. So my answer is C. Okay. 20. 20. Jackson has 180 pieces of gum. He wants to share the pieces of gum equally with his friends. Which the table below is the relationship between N, the number of people receive gum, and P, the number of pieces he has. So you just have to look at the chart and see what works, right? You know it's 180 pieces, so you know your table has to equal 180. Well, let's look at this. 2 goes into 360. Well, that's 180. 4 goes into 720. How many times does that go in there? 720 divided by 4. That's 180. 1080. We're going to do this. Divided by 6. Is 180, right, and 2160 divided by 12, that's 180. Hmm. Oh, you know why? Because the, okay, okay, well let's look at this, so this one, this one's not going to work. If you have 10 people going to 18, that's not going to work, right? Because that's 1.8. You need to get a total to 180. So that doesn't work. 10 into 170, that would be uh, 17, right? And so the, the numbers don't work out there. So 2 goes into 90, right? That would be 2 times. If you had 90 people and they get 2 pieces of gum... That would be 180. If you had 45 people and they get four pieces of gum, then uh, that would be... So F is your correct answer for 20. Okay, let's turn the page. 21. Okay, here you're looking at... This is sort of a logic problem. So it says there's 80 pieces of furniture for sale in the store. Of these pieces, 20 are table or desks and 10 are benches. Okay. So if we take 80 and we subtract 20 and 10, that's 80, 30, that leaves you 50. Right. And the rest, and the rest are chairs and tables. The ratio of the number of chairs and the number of tables is 3 to 2, which circle best represents it. Okay. So, uh, it is a ratio of chair. So, if I go through, my, my ratio is 3 to 2, and this is chairs. Sorry. If this is chairs and this is tables, right? And I want to find an equivalent fraction with 50, right? Because that's what I have left, right? What would I multiply? 2 times what number to get 50? Well, it would be 25. And I have to do the same thing to the top. So 3 times 25, which would be 75. Okay. So that means I have 75 chairs and I have 50 tables. So now I'm going to look at the chart and try to see what it makes, right? So 
as you can see, desks and benches, right? This doesn't make any sense at all, right? Because you only have 20 and 10, so that chart looks crazy. This kind of looks the same, but now tables and chairs are equal, and it's not, it's not equal, right? So it can't be that one. So now we have this. We have tables, chairs. But we need to have more chairs and tables, so this doesn't work. So it has to be A. So 21 is A. Okay, 22. Okay, the electric eel has a length of 1.4 meters. What fraction is equivalent to the length of the electric eel meters? Okay, so he has a length of 1.4 meters. What fraction is equivalent to the length? So it's 1.84, right? And that's tenths, hundredths, and that's a whole number. So if you take this, if you have one whole number, you have to have a one over here. And if you were to write this part as a fraction, that'd be 84 hundredths, right? So that'd be 84 over 100. But now we look over here and we don't, really have anything that's like that but maybe we can simplify right and this one's 25 so let's divide this by 4 so if we divide if we divide well if I divide that by 4 that would be 25 and if I divide 84 by 4 whoops I'm sorry 84 divided by 4 that's 21 and guess what? It matches up. So this is my answer. Okay. Sometimes you just have to dissect it and think it through. Okay. Okay. This is 23. Let's look at 23. Bob weighed two boxes. The combined weight of the boxes is shown on the scale. Right. And it's showing you that this is 128 ounces. So the combination of these two together is 128 ounces. The ratio of the weight of the box A and box E is 3 to 1. Which of the following is the closest weight to box A? Right? So if the total is 128 ounces, right? My ratio is 3 to 1. And the total is 128. I have to find some number that can go into 128. Well, if I, if I have 3 and 1, that means I have 4 parts. So if I have 128 divided by 4, whoops, I'm sorry, 128 divided by 4, that's 32, right? So that means I have 4 parts at 32, okay? So if I use this ratio, I would have 32 over... 96. This is an equivalent fraction, right? So I know 3, the box A, is 3 times bigger than box B, right? So my answer is D, 96 inches. 96 ounces. I'm sorry. Okay, turn the page. Okay, this is question number 24. The air temperature in Ms. Stark's classroom was 90 degrees at 7 a.m. She turned on the air conditioner and the air decreased 2 degrees for every 10 minutes for the next hour. By 8.30, the air temperature decreased 4 degrees. The expression below can be used to determine the temperature in Ms. room. What was the air temperature in Ms. Class's room at 8.30? So you just have to figure this out. It's just PEMDAS, right? So if you redo that, you do parentheses first. 60 divided by 10 is 6, so 90 minus 2 times 6 minus 4 and then PEMDAS is multiplication so that's 12 so you have 90 minus 12 minus 4 then you have 90 uh, 8 9 10 so minus 8 um, so 90 minus 8 Just check in my answer. 90 minus 8 equals 
Oh, you know what? So that is 90 minus 8 is 82. But then it says uh, the air temperature had decreased another 4 degrees. The expression below. So we this is where it went. The expression got us to 82. But then here at the end, that's pretty tricky, decreased another 4 degrees. So 82 minus minus 4 would give you uh, 82, 80, 74. What is it? Oh, at 830. So here's another 4 degrees. The temperature below is... <coughs> okay. Well, I made a mistake here, but I just, I want to tell you what the right answer is. So, it's, your right answer is F. Yeah, that's the only thing it can be. Because 70 is too little, and this is too high. So, yeah, it's F. Sorry, sometimes I even get mixed up. Okay, so, 25. 25, this was kind of tricky, right? You just had to go and convert all these to a decimal, right? And you do that by dividing the numerator by the denominator. So you're putting the numerator in the doghouse divided by the denominator. When you do that, all these come out to 8.7. And you'll actually see them repeat over here. So you really only had to do one triangle. Okay. So your correct statement is B. Okay, 26. The line segment NM passes through the center of the circle shown on the coordinate below. Which equation can be used to find C, the circumference of the circle? Okay, well, this is your diameter. We know that circumference is equal to pi times D, right? So if I rewrite circumference is equal to pi times the diameter, which is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So it's 60. And that's what the answer is. F pi times 60. Okay. Okay, turn the page. 27. Okay, Lindsay spent two and one third hours in a science lab on Wednesday. She spent three fourths of an hour preparing materials for an experiment. Uh, she spent five, six an hour conducting an experiment. She spent the rest of the time cleaning up her lab based on the information. Which statement is true? Okay. So, you could change it to decimals and subtract. Right? Or you could change it. You know what? Let's try that. I didn't try this. Let's see this. So, she spent two and a third hours in the lab. Right? So, that would be uh, 2 times 3 is 6, that's 7 thirds, right? So that's the total, right? This is the total. And she spent 3 fourths of an hour. Oh, we'd have to convert it to twelfths. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you notice, if you notice, we have a 6, a 4, and a 3. So we're going to have to find a common, because we're going to subtract. So we have to get a common denominator. So let's change that to 12. So I'm going to multiply this by 4. So 7 times 4 is 28. 3 times 4 is 12. So my total is 28 twelfths. Then 3 fourths of an hour preparing your experiment. So that would be... Uh, 9 twelfths minus 9 twelfths minus, and she spent 5 6 conducting the experiment, so that's 2, so that's 10 twelfths, 10 twelfths, and she spent the rest of the time in her lab based on this information, which is true. So it's a so that's 28. So that's 28 minus 19, 28 minus 19, 
is 9, so it's equal to 9 twelfths, and we can actually simplify that if we divide that by, if we do the factors, 3 times 3 and 3 times 4, that cancels out, that's 3 fourths of an hour, and if you convert that to, nope. So then it says, Lindsay spent 1 and 8.15 cleaning her lab. Well, no, because it was this, so it's not that. Lindsay spent two-thirds of an hour preparing materials conducting the experiment. Well, that's not right, because, uh, yeah, because if you, if you, if you simplify this to it, that's not right. And then Lindsay spent the same amount of time conducting the experiment as she spent cleaning the lab. Uh, that's not true. So the only thing left is D. She spent one twelfth more conducting the experiment. So sometimes you just have to do it by a process of elimination. But you have to get your numbers so that you know which statement is true. Okay, 28. Okay, 28. Metal and glass make up 100% of a sculpture. The G represents the percentage of the sculpture that is made of glass. Which equation can be used to find M, the percentage of the sculpture that is made of metal? Okay, it's made up of 100%. The metal and glass make up 100%. If G represents the percentage of sculpture made of glass, what is it going to be found? Well, it's just taking the total minus G, right? If this is the total amount, and you know that this is the uh, G represents the glass, then whatever's left, it, this has to be your answer. Okay, 29. 29, Sean and David each washed a car. Sean spent five hours washing his car. Every two minutes, he spent washing his car. Each boy started washing the car at four. David finished washing at 4.30. At what time did Sean finish washing his car? Okay, well, it, this is more of a logic thing to work through it. There's not any real math, but your answer is C, 515. Okay, 30. Okay, 30. Okay, 30, a triangle ABC. Uh, measures an angle of 70 degrees. Angle B is congruent with C. What is the measure of B in degrees? Record your answer. Okay. So if you have a triangle, right, and one angle is 70 degrees, and these two are congruent, which means they're the same, we know the total angles, the total has to be 180 degrees. So we're going to subtract 70, which gives us 110 Right, and we know they're congruent, so we're going to take 110 divided by 2, and you're going to get 55. So your answer is 55 for 30. Okay, 31. List shows the amount of each ingredient Charlotte used for, to make three servings of macaroni and cheese. Based on this, which statement is not true? Okay, so you're seeing this is the, the ratio or the relationship of the ingredients. Right? It says to make six, and this makes only three servings, right? So it says to make six servings, Charlotte used five cups of cheddar cheese. Well, this is three. Cheddar cheese is two and a half. I'd have to double it. That's four. Um, yeah, to make six servings, Charlotte should use five cups of cheddar cheese. Two and a half, two, four. Yeah. That's five. Based on the, which statement? Oh, it's not true. Ooh. Okay. Make sure you notice whether it says not or not. So this is a true statement. To make 24 servings, you use 96 ma macaroni. So she's using 12 for 3. Uh, uh, 24. 3 times uh, 24 is 90. Yes. So this is a... True statement. Okay, that's not our answer. To make 12 servings, so you use 4 eggs. So if 3 servings, you multiply eggs times 4. That is true. That's a true statement. So the only thing that leaves you is 9 servings, you should use 
eight cups of milk, right? And that would be three, so three, it, it, that would only be six, and this says nine. So this is your answer. Okay, 32. Okay, it says using prime factorization of 99. Okay, so you do your tree. You, here's 99. You make your little tree. That's 9 times 11. You can't do anything with this. This is prime. You do it again. This is 3 times 3 is 9. So now you have 3 times 3 times 3 times 11. What is the prime factorization? Well, it's not 3 times 3. It's not 9. Because they want you to factor it. Right? They want the prime factorization, so this is not right. And 3 squared times 11, this is, you could rewrite this as 3 squared, so F is your answer. It's not that either. Okay. Okay, 33. 33, the graph below shows the number of students in a math club who voted for each of the types of pizza. Right, which statement is best supported by the graph? So let's look at it. Number of students that voted. So 20 to 20, halfway between 20 and 24 would be 22. So this is 22. Mushroom, that's 12. Pepperoni is 5. Cheese is 8. Now we got to add it up. So 22, 12, 5, 8, 4, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Put down the 7, carry the 1. That's 3. That's So you have a total of 47. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep, 47 students. Which statement is best supported? The number of students who voted for mushroom pizza is 2 times the number of students who voted for sausage. No, it's not. The number of students who voted for sausage is thir 13 more than the number of students of cheese. 13 sausage, then cheese, 8, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. No, that's not true. The number of students who voted for pepperoni is 6 fewer than the number of voted for pepperoni, 5, then voted for mushroom no so, oh I'm sorry yeah that is true yes so let's see the number of students who voted for cheese is one more than the number of pepperoni no so it has to be C so 33 is C okay 34 34 the table shows the relationship between some values of P and V based on the value expression a value of V in terms of corresponding with P. So you're looking at this chart and you're trying to find the relationship, right? And I'm kind of running out of time here, so I'm going to speed up a little bit. But as you look and analyze this chart, you should realize that P plus 10 will give you this, okay? So P plus uh, 10 and 1 tenth will give you this answer here. You can see how it goes up one tenth, so it's 10 plus one tenth. So C is your answer. 35, it says, which number is a common multiple of four and 11? Okay, well, they just, you have to do some math, right? And you have to find the multiple. So you're gonna go four, eight, 12, eight, 12, right? And then 11, and you're gonna run that out right until you find where you matches right and when you do that you'll find out that it's 176 okay that's 35 okay 36 36 a zoo is five percent of the birds are macaws what decimal is, is equal to five percent okay well if you to change percent right you have five percent you want to change it to a decimal you move it two places to the left, so that's one, two, so that is equal to 0 0.05. Easy one. Okay, 37, three connected gears are shown. It tells you that uh, for every complete rotation of Z, that Y moves twice, so this moves twice, 
and every rotation of this moves three times right so this is one two three based on the information what is the number of complete rotations of z will make when x moves 192 rotations so if this goes 192 rotations how many times does this go well you just take 192 uh, you take 912 divided by because this is twice three times divided by six and you get c or 152. okay 38 38 the stem and leaf plot shows the length of several hermit crabs right so here is your data this is your stem so this is you add this to this that's 125 150 175 225 and so on so on so on which line plot best represents the data in the stem and leaf plot so you have to take your line and match it up with the data in your stem and leaf chart right so you just have to look at each one go up here look at it and if you do that you find out that g is your correct answer oh my gosh guys okay i'm going to try to speed up this has been 49 minutes already okay so next question this is 39 39 it says four sets of angles are shown in which of these sets is the ratio four to one between the measure of angle s and the measure of angle t you're just looking at the numbers you find the relationship of four to one your answer is c okay 40 40 a farmer has a bale of hay that mass of 36 kilograms how many milligrams of hay are in a bale well you have to look at your chart right and if you look at here you see kilogram is equal to a thousand grams and one gram is equal to 1000 milligrams right so that's a million if you multiply a thousand times another thousand that's a million and you have 36 kilograms so your answer would be f okay 41 the center of the circle below is point m here's the center of the circle this is a radius this is a radius this is a radius it says which experiment can find jl so if you do jl well you know that this is also 34 this is 34 so your only possible answer is b 2 times 34 okay 42 okay it says enrique bought a football and a puzzle at the store he paid 15 dollars for the football paid 24 dollars for the football how much money did he pay for the puzzle in dollars and cents right and when you do the math you find out that it is eight dollars and 67 cents okay 43 43 one week a family drank p pints of milk which equation can be used to find the number of gallons in a make okay so you're just looking at that relationship so g is total gallons is equal to pints divided by four times two because there's um uh find the number of gallons yeah yeah so your answer is d so 43 is d okay 44 <clears throat> 44 it says the figure below is a scale drawing of a warehouse floor use the ruler provided to measure the dimensions of the figure to the nearest quarter inch which of the following is closest to the perimeter of the actual warehouse and the feet okay so you have to measure your inches one inch is equal to 16 feet so you have to measure all your dimensions right and get total inches and then multiply it by 16 and you should get g okay okay 45 45 the photograph below shows the number of packages of different brands of batteries the store sold in the day which statement best to support the information in the photograph well the first thing you have to figure out is this is 250 so that's 500 yeah 500 a thousand that's 1250 that's 500 that's a thousand that's the same thing 1250 five, that's a thousand 
and this is 500, 500, that's 1,000, that's 5,000, five, 1,500. Okay, so then you're going to look at these numbers, you're going to compare it to your ratio, and you should find that C is the correct answer. 46, there are a total of 950 boxes of shoes in the store. Half the boxes contain athletic shoes. Another 125 contain dress shoes. Other remaining boxes of shoes, four out of five contain sandals. Based on the expression below, how many boxes at the store contain sandals? So basically, it's just doing the math and figuring this out. And when you do that, you find out that F is the correct answer. Okay, let's turn that over. 47. It says the ordered pairs below represent the location of the four stops on the bus stop. Here's your X coordinate, there's your Y coordinate. If you notice, you have four stops between zero and one, right? So that's a fourth. Each one of these is one fourth. Okay, so all you have to do is plot it. So here's three fourths, one, two, three fourths, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you do four fourths, which is one, and eight fourths, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is K, this is L. Then you go eight fourths, which is two, and five fourths, one, two, three, four, five, which is M. And then you have seven fourths, which is right here, seven fourths and one, two, three, so it's right here. So this is N. So your answer is? D or stop N. 48. Freddy. Freddy used 28 nails to make birdhouses. He used the same number of nails for each birdhouse, which the following cannot be the number of birdhouses Freddy made. Okay, so if you have only 28 nails, you have to have an even number for each birdhouse, right? So your answer would have to be G. Okay, 48. We're getting there. Okay, 49. Okay. 49. Quinlan pays $178 for four months for his guitars. At this rate, how much will he pay in three years? Well, you got to take 178 divided by four to get what he gets per month, right? And then you multiply that by three. Oh, you multiply it. That's per month, and then you have to multiply it by 36 because there's 12 months to a year. So you take this answer times 36, and you get C. Okay, 50. He drew a circle and labeled the center S. He used the expression 12 times pi to find the circumference of the circle. Which of the following could he could have drawn? Right? Well, we know that this is circumference is equal to pi times the diameter and so that means we would have to have a diameter of 12 so if this is the radius of 6 there's another radius over here of 6 this equals 12 so the only one it could be is J okay 51 okay which equation is true so now you're looking at, this is a decimal, how would I write it as a fraction, right? Uh, this isn't true. 1.9, that's a whole number, it's not even represented, so that's not it. 18 over 9, that, that's not right. So your only answer is A. Okay, 52, last question in the diagram below. What is the measure of the angle P into the nearest degree? Well, if you notice, this protractor goes from 0 to 180, and it also goes from 0 to 180 on the other side. Well, you're looking at this angle right here, right? So you go and you look, and there's 20, it's 21, so F is your answer. Okay, that's the last question. I'm sorry, guys, it took so long, but this was a really long uh, practice star test. So... Anyway, make sure that you put this in the canvas. This is your score. This will go into focus. And I will see you guys on the other side. Talk to you later.